My name is Kayla Hamner, and I've been a part of Sensor Indian Aquatics for my full three years of being an OT student at KU. Um, the first year I was just an instructor, and then the last two years I've been also a student director. So a lot of our kids are nonverbal and they don't use their words. So when we get down on their level, when we greet them, it really tells them, you know, we're here, I'm right here with you. Um, we're gonna go have some fun. And they know that you're in their, in their court. So when we get in the pool initially, sometimes it's cold and kind of shocking to their little bodies. So uh, we do our best to get them acclimated. So we'll spin them around, jump around, just get them warmed up a little bit to try to ease them in and get them a little less tight. Another safety concern that we have with a lot of our swimmers is the fact that they open their mouth and try to swallow or drink the water. Um, so we work a lot on keeping our mouth closed and immediately try to, you know, teach them how to blow bubbles instead or redirect them to something else so they aren't doing that consistently. So this is just something that we use to calm, them, calm the kiddos down sometimes. Um, they can get overwhelmed by the sounds or the lights or um, water being splashed in their face. Just a lot of different sensory things that go on in a pool. And with autism, a lot of our kids get overwhelmed by those things. And so one calming method that we use is just squeezing, applying tight pressure on different parts of their body. Um, some of them really enjoy that. Some of them just need breaks. Some of them just need to sit for a little while. So it kind of depends on the kiddo, um, but that's where it comes into play importance that we build rapport with them and we get to know them as individuals. So with his back float, we're using a lot of those same strategies. I'm counting on my fingers above his head to try to get his head back. I have support, he's laying his head on my shoulder and I have my hand underneath his back um, to just make him feel safe. And then as the lessons go on, I would grade those differently. So um, maybe turn him so his shoulders not, or so his head's not on my shoulder anymore and just use my hand and so on. So when the kiddos are tentative to put their face in the water, a lot of times um, when we work on kicking, their, their backs are super arched and they're up high. And so you'll see me holding him underneath his belly, but his arms are on my shoulders and he's facing me and we're working on kicking. But as I were to work with him, in the future, you know, we'd grade away from that. He'd use a barbell to hold onto, a kickboard, something of that nature, so he gets used to being closer down to the water. So sometimes when we take breaks, uh, I just like to bounce the kids around if they're little sometimes. Um, it kind of helps them get used to maybe a little bit of water being splashed in their face, or um, it could be preparatory for going underwater, doing bobs, something of that sort. So along with getting their different parts of their face wet, um, in preparation for going underwater. Sometimes we'll take little watering cans or just use our fingers and sprinkle water on top of their head so they get used to the feeling of water being on their head. So with this back float, I moved him away from my shoulder and you can kind of see how he's like super tense and very uncomfortable and his legs are flying apart. Um, and he's looking at me, looking for support. And you know, I'm giving him that encouragement, like you can do it, it's okay. And then, to get his head back more, I just put my head right next to his and look up with him. So in this one, you can see me grade out the support that I give him. So when he first goes on his back, I have my full hand on his back. And then as he gets more comfortable, I go to my fingertips and then eventually I just drop both my hands so he's doing the skill independently. With this skill, we're using a kickboard underneath his core to keep him on top of the water, um, but he's also doing the breaststroke arms all by himself, but you can tell that he's cueing himself because we've learned the cues for what the arms do. And so now he uses that as a strategy for himself as he's swimming. A lot of times when our kids are entering or exiting the pool, they get distracted. You know, it's a new thing, there's water, or hey, my parents are outside the pool, I gotta get to them quickly. And so safety goes out the door a little bit. And so um, when we do exit or enter, a lot of times they are able to do it independently, but we have to redirect them or provide them a little bit of support just so they maintain and continue the task. I'm Jessica, and my son is Cruz Giffen, and he's seven years old. He is really smart, um, and he's extremely capable, and that he is, a big lover. Um, if you get the opportunity to connect with Cruz, it's like the most rewarding thing because you know it's like 
100% genuine and sincere. At his school that he goes to, if he has like a teacher that goes on maternity leave or if they're gone for a, a long amount of time, um, his teachers always tell me that he's the most excited kid to see them again. Um, he just has like true relationships with people and is just really connects with certain people that he knows love him. Um, so yeah, just like coming off maternity leave, walking in and Cruz is the most excited person in the room to see her, so. Um, the first time we saw the ocean was probably one of the coolest things I experienced with them. Um, we were at a, a beach in California, in Laguna Beach, and um, when he saw it for the first time and walked out, he just watched it for probably 15 or 20 minutes and just stared at it and all. He loves it. <laughs> it's his happy place. Um, he's just something about it. He just loves looking at it and he loves being in it. So, well, just the community of, of being around people that can understand him and have experience with kids similar to him and um, being hopefully to be able to adapt their teaching to help him learn. Um, I actually have a friend that's a form, former family um, that used to take take lessons here and they just said really, really great things about it and um, we were really excited to try to, to try to get in, so. He definitely has learned um, just a little bit more about awareness of water, um, that he can do different things with his body to, and that will change what, what he is doing in the water. Um, um, success would, would obviously be like him swimming, um, but even just him being able to get more comfortable with going under and holding his breath, um, learning that he shouldn't go in without an adult um, in case he ever did come across a, a time when he would be tempted to get in without someone. Um, and just, yeah, just being more comfortable and just more cautious. It, I just think that the relationship that they built from the first second he ever got here, I remember I was so nervous of how it would go with it being such a new thing for him. And she like immediately just like stepped in and from literally from the beginning, he has just been drawn to her and listens to her. And um, that's been like the best part about it is just knowing, oh, when we go, he talks about her and he knows that's who he's, who he's seen and he trusts her. And just the fact that he'll take direction from her has is, is been really cool, so.